Hey guys, welcome back to No Catchy Name. It's me, Ella. Today is Tuesday, January 11th, <laughs> and this is a No Catchy Name episode. Uh, 162, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but it's, it's just going to be a short one, because I only have one finished object, and I have two whips that I've been working on. But one of my whips I've been working a lot on. So, um, and also, they're gonna, the videos are going to be kind of sparse, I guess, <laughs> coming up soon, because I am being induced in two weeks ish like a little over two weeks <laughs> uh for the baby you know and so yeah so i won't be making videos around that time <laughs> but um it really depends on like my recovery and how i feel and all that uh and if i have any crochet time <laughs> it's just it's gonna take me a while to adjust to having another baby again because it's been six years since i had a baby anyways let's get into my finished object <laughs> if you watch uh, my other videos you would already seen this because it was my first um, stitch your library. Also, disclaimer, my dishwasher's running. <laughs> I gotta wash some dishes. But, uh, anyways. So, it's my cauldron. I think it turned out so cute. This is a pattern by Pixie Murray Crates, which is Michelle Strada. She has a YouTube channel and an Etsy shop, and she has some of the cutest patterns ever. <laughs> absolutely love her patterns. I've gotten to test a few of them for her, and she's gifted me some, and I've bought some, and it's just, I love her patterns. But, um, this is part of a set, so you have to purchase the whole set to get this pattern. Um, there's the cauldron, a ghost, a candy corn, a cat, I think, maybe a pumpkin. There's quite a few patterns in there, so it's totally worth it. It's made with worsted weight yarn and an H hook, which is a five millimeter. Um, I used, this is red heart gray, but I still can't find, find the ball band. I had a hard time finding it the other day, and I, I don't know what I did with it. I must have thrown it away or something. <laughs> and then the top part is glow worm by red heart which is discontinued and I love that yarn <laughs> but um it's such a cute green it's made in a few pieces but it's really easy like the legs are separate and so are the handles but they they sew on easy enough this is separate from the cauldron body <laughs> but you crochet it on there so you don't have to sew it on there so all you got to sew on is the little handles and the little feet and there's an option to make a face she has uh, she uses felt faces I believe and uh, I just decided not to do that because um, I'm going to make a little witch to put beside this. This will probably set on my little mantle area this coming Halloween. And uh, so I found a witch pattern already in my stash that I'm going to make up to put beside this to, you know, have her little witch's brew <laughs> beside it. But yeah, I really loved making this. It worked out really quick. I, I made it in like an hour while watching um, TV one night. And uh, it's just got some stuffing in it and it's just cute. So I'll link that below, but it is pay for pattern. Normally I share, try to share free patterns with you guys, but every now and then I gotta show some paid for ones because some people are really good at designing patterns and Michelle is one of those. She has the cutest things ever. I've made so many of her patterns, it's not even funny. All right, so that's my only finished object. But that's just because I haven't been feeling like crocheting a ton. And when I do crochet lately, it's been on my scrap blanket. So I'm gonna show you my next Emigrumi first though. I started this uh, yesterday when I was sitting around waiting for time for my doctor appointment. <laughs> Pull it out, it's in my Pokemon project bag I made a few years ago. I'm just gonna dump it out. So this is a pattern, this is technically a paid for pattern too because it's in a book. This is a book that I've had for a while. It was gifted to me. It's called Whimsical Stitches by Laura Epsey. I'll link it below too if you're interested. I think the Kindle version is cheaper than the, heart, the, the physical. So if you're interested in have it just digital copies but it's got so many cute patterns i'm gonna look at all those i've made a few of them too super cute but anyways the pattern that i'm working on that i started yesterday is the sunflower right there i'm thinking i'm gonna give it to my mom she loves sunflowers so i got that started yesterday and um i know i said this recently but always read your patterns first <laughs> because i was just i started crocheting it and then i realized i needed a dowel which i didn't have and also a flower pot, which I should have known. I mean, it's, it's right there. <laughs> but, um, so luckily my OB is in the same town that our, that the Hobby Lobby is in. So before my appointment, we ran over there and I got a dowel and a flower pot, which is over there. I forgot to bring it. <laughs> but I got a really long dowel. I don't know. It was like a yard maybe. Um, and it was only 79 cents. And then the little flower pot was a dollar thirty something. So that was like the cheapest Hobby Lobby trip I ever did. It was like $2 and something. But, um. And then Devin just cut it. He sawed the dowel down to the sides that I need it. So now I have extra in case I make something else. But yeah, so I started the sunflower. 
and I got its little face or head <laughs> I'm gonna try to stitch around the eyes a little bit with white to make them pop more because I really should have used a lighter brown and then I'm gonna do the little mouth in a light brown color so that's its head <laughs> and this is a uh, red heart super saver coffee which I had to roll up into a giant ball. <laughs> it was a jumbo skein that was like partially used, so it was real floppy and it was like getting tangled up. So I stopped, after I finished the head, I stopped working on it and I just sat there and wound up this giant ball. So this is a big scrap ball, I guess, of uh, Red Heart Super Saver coffee. But just cause the skein was so floppy, it was driving me nuts. Uh, and then I used Red Heart Super Saver medium time to make the green parts. Someone had made all the green parts so I could put the yarn back up. So here's the two leaves for the, the stem. <laughs> and then this is the stem, which this is the part that the dowel is going to go into. The stem, it's also going to go down into the pot a little bit, so it'll hold it like sturdy, you know. So I made the stem. And the last green part is this little circle piece that will actually go on the back of the head to cover up where you attach <laughs> the stem to the head. It'll kind of like cap it like that so it looks nice from behind. So I did all that so I could go ahead and put up the green yarn. I was gonna put the brown yarn, but I, there's still one more piece of brown I have to make. Let me get the pattern. It's the dirt. <laughs> it um it goes around the dowel. I'm gonna show it to you upside down. <laughs> right here. It goes around the dowel. You have to crochet it around the dowel. I actually crocheted that before I read the pattern because I wasn't paying attention. And then I had to frog it because I was like, dang it, because you have to have the dowel. And that was before I had the dowel. But now that I got it, I can finish that. And then I just have to make all the petals. You gotta make 14 petals <laughs> out. And I'm using, I'm gonna use Red Heart Bright Yellow. This is the old bright yellow that's actually bright. The new bright yellow is really like dingy looking. So this is the older skein that I've had for a while. And uh, so I'm gonna make the petals out of that. So it's gonna be pretty, I think. I think the colors go good together, the three. I just wanna try to stitch. <clears throat> some little white bits around his eyes to make it, them pop a little bit more. I tried to use color safety eyes, but none of them looked right with this brown. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to make like accent the eyes a little, and then the little mouth is gonna be like a lighter color brown, I think. I don't know, I'll do that when I get there. But it's getting there, so I gotta make 14 petals, <laughs> which are, they're, they're similar to the leaves. They're just smaller. So I think I'll make a few and it'll be stuck in my head and then I can just watch TV and make the rest of them. And then I just gotta assemble it, which is gonna be a pain in the butt, because I have to sew all those petals to his head. <laughs> but um, that's something I can do while you know watch TV and just relax. And so that's my first whip. I'm also using for that. I'm using a G hook, and I'm using my cute uh, s'mores themed one that I got in Vlogmas 2020. And it has a matching stitch marker. It's just hanging on my stitch marker heart. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so it's super cute. I love that. And I'm using G-Hook. I already said that. So yeah, so that's my first whip. My second whip is my scrappy blanket. But real quick, I'm going to put all this back in this bag so I don't lose it all. <clears throat> I'm working on my scrappy blanket a lot. Because I'm nine months pregnant tomorrow. <laughs> I'll actually be 36 weeks, which is nine months. Um, with the way they calculate it. Because technically, if you stay pregnant the whole time, you're 10 months pregnant. <laughs> but um, whatever. So I've been sitting around a lot one of the days that I don't feel good and working on my scrappy blanket. And it is, I'm using just a ripple pattern, I guess it is, it's like a stitch pattern. And the one that I'm following is the one by Bella Coco, which I'll link below her video tutorial for it. Uh, it's repeats of 12 plus three. So, and it's a really simple pattern. It's like stuck in my brain now. <laughs> But I was using my pinks and reds, and then I went into my blues, and now I'm into my green scrap balls. So this bag has got a lot of green scrap balls in it, plus my yarn bowl and my hook and my scissors are all down in there. So I'm working a lot on this. Last time y'all seen it, I have a stitch marker. Let me find it. Or a progress keeper. It's a Christmas one, because <laughs> it was the one that was on my craft cart. So the last time I showed it, it was... like five inches <laughs> now it's much larger than that so like i said i finished all my scrap balls in pink and reds so there's all the pink and reds and then i went into the blues and then the greens blues 
and now I'm doing greens. I have a lot of green scrap balls, so the green section is going to be pretty big compared to the blue. I didn't have much blue scrap balls. Apparently, I don't use blue a lot. I'm going to fold this in half so I can try to show it to you better. I did weave in all the ends from the um, pinks and reds and the blues. So once I get done with the greens, I will weave in all those ends. So there's all the pinks. And then it goes into the blues. And now the greens. And a lot of my green scrap balls are the same color. I guess from where I've used multiple skeins of like evergreen and stuff. So I actually have two bags of scrap balls that are green. One is all the duplicates and then this one is all the ones that of one of each of those. So I'm trying to go through all of them first. And it's like the pink. I had some leftover scrap balls from pink and blue. Mostly the blue was all navy, like navy color. I had a ton of those too. And um, cause I didn't want to put too much of the same color on there. So I'm just going to put that back in my scrap bin and that'll just be the start of them building back up. But I'm really loving how this is looking. So after I finish the greens, which is going to be a pretty big section, it's going to be big like the pink, little blue. <laughs> so the green's probably going to be pretty big too, maybe like that much more. <laughs> then I'm going to pull out my orange and yellow bag of scrap balls and put that them in there. Then after I use up all those scrap balls, I can judge whether it needs more... Um, length but it's pretty wide it's wider than my wingspan and I'm 5'7 so I'm not a tape measure <laughs> but I, I would say it's probably right at maybe right at six feet uh, wide I'm not gonna do border on this because the blanket's so busy it doesn't need one I don't think but it's gonna be so pretty I'm so excited it's coming out so good I'm hoping to finish this in the next two weeks because I'd like to get this done before the baby's born but we'll see it just depends on how I feel <laughs> and um I want to try to work on some other things too so i have something to share with you guys right before she comes and then the videos will probably be pretty sparse after that but i am using a um a h hook for this blanket worsted weight scraps they're all acrylic and i chained 204 plus three so 207 to do the repeat to make it as wide as i wanted it and um you can make it any size you want. Just it has to be multiples of 12 plus 3. The 3 is the turn in chain. <laughs> and uh, it's a really simple pattern. It's really easy. And I think it's looking really good. I never thought to do this before with my scraps. I've always separated my scraps by color. So that if I was working on Amigurumi and I needed like a hair color brown, I'd grab my brown bag out and then find the right brown I wanted. But um, I just decided to use all my scraps by color. And it's looking really good. It's gonna be a really pretty blanket. I can't wait to do the oranges and yellows. It's gonna be real pretty. And that'll leave me with a bunch of brown, black, and white, uh, beige, peachy colors, like all my skin tone colors and hair colors and black and white. So I do use those a lot though for Emma Grimmy. So, but I don't wanna put them in this blanket because I want this blanket to be colorful and bright. And I don't wanna put black and stuff in it to like, you know, dim it down. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I also have a scrap ball bag <laughs> of uh, variegated yarns and like glittery top yarns and self striping. There's a few in here, like there's mandala um, ombre pieces. There's one in the blue too, I think. I can't remember. But I went ahead and used them because they're like subtle, you know. But I didn't want to put variegated yarns into this blanket. So I'm excited. Now let me move my little stitch marker. <laughs> last time I showed it to you guys I think it was last week so I'm working the heck on this but it's really quick it's just um, double crochets and then there's increases and decreases but it's all double crochets so now my stitch markers up here where I stopped at and uh, so next time hopefully I'll when I show it to you to be in the oranges and yellows or it might even be done but yeah so I'm gonna keep on working on the greens and then weaving all those ends and go from there so that's all I'm working on <laughs> I do have some more a couple patterns pulled out to do more stitchy libraries with that's been in my stash for a while that I want to make so I'll be working on one, one of those probably later this week maybe after I finish the sunflower um and then that'll be a video coming out soon for you guys uh tomorrow's what you work on Wednesday so that'll probably be something I don't know <laughs> and um let's see here I'll, I'll do a happy mail video sometime this week because I got a package I want to show you guys two actually and yeah I don't know <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep making videos up until she comes there will be probably some videos right after because I want to share her with you guys <laughs> I know a lot of you are excited to see her but um right after she's born it might just be some vlogs for a little while because I I don't know 
if I have time to crochet. <laughs> I crocheted a lot when Jace was a baby, but she might be a completely different baby than he was. So I just have to wait and see her temperament and all that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was a little bummed out yesterday when I found out I was being induced. And that's only because they had just told me two weeks ago that I wasn't going to have to be induced. Um, that they don't want to do that unless absolutely needed. And then they just like changed their mind. That's one reason that made me mad. The second reason I was bummed is because Jesse was induced and it was an absolutely horrible experience. The whole thing was really terrible. And um, I have a lot of like... I guess PTSD or something um, from that. And I'm just worried that's going to happen again. I'm trying to be positive, but it's hard when you've went through a bad experience and you're about to go through the same thing again. Um, but yeah, you know, I know it's better for me and her. The reason they're inducing me is because I have been on blood thinners the entire pregnancy. Uh, up until last week, I was on a different blood thinner and then they put me on heparin because it's easier to control, they said. And the reason I have to be induced is because they have to take me off the heparin for 48 hours before they induce me to, so they can control the bleeding. Because if they, like if I just go into labor right now while I'm still on heparin and go to the hospital and have the baby, I will hemorrhage because my blood's thin. <laughs> so, and I hemorrhaged with Jesse and I wasn't on any blood thinners at the time. So, the reason they induced me with Jesse is because I had preeclampsia. But uh, this time, it's just because of stupid blood thinners. <laughs> But it's just stressful, but I'm also trying to, you know, cope with it. <laughs> and we're trying to get the last little bit of things ready for her. Because, you know, we thought we had like four plus weeks, and now we know we only have two. <laughs> so, um, Devin's about to talk to his work about him taking time off. And I'm trying to get the, the bags all packed and stuff. And we got the car seat and her bed and everything ready. I gotta get the baby swing for my sisters. It's still in her shed. <laughs> I gotta get it here and put it together. I need a rockin' recliner. Me and Devin was just talking about how we were gonna get some before the baby's born, and then they told us that yesterday, so now we gotta get get one. <laughs> Cause uh, the one that we had with Jesse, we got rid of. We gave it to my mom. Um, because we didn't think we'd need it again, but we're gonna need it again. So yeah, so I did some sewing this morning, quite a bit. I wanna try to get those bags done and up before the baby's born. Uh, so if I feel like sewing more later, I only need like two more hours of sewing and they'll be done. I just have to sit down and do it. But um, it's going to be some tote bags. They're bigger than the ones last time, but they're not the huge ones. Uh, hook cases and a few zipper and ocean pouches. And then that'll be all the bags until probably uh, like a month or so after she's born, whenever I feel like sewing again. And uh, I'm looking so forward to being able to work out again. I haven't been, you know, they haven't wanted me to do much of anything. Um, and I miss walking so bad. It was so like good for my brain to just walk and listen to music and stuff. So now I'll be walking and listening to music with her strapped to me with my baby carrier thing or in her stroller, which I love. I love the stroller we got. I'm so glad we got that one. Um, I'm just looking so forward to being able to do that again because it used to be, that was like my, my, my me time was just walking and relaxing, you know. And it's good for my health, good for my mental health. Oh yeah, a lot of the changes coming up. <laughs> so, um, you know, if I disappear for a little while, I'll let you guys know around the time that I'm going to be induced. Um, and then I'll try to update you throughout. If I can, I'll have Devin come on my phone and post as me <laughs> on um, the community tab and on the Facebook group. Um, and I'll definitely share some pictures with you guys and stuff. I don't know. I'm hoping we're only in the hospital for a couple days like normal people. Because with Jesse, I was in the hospital for a week. And it was stressful. <laughs> the day we got out of the hospital, the next day was my birthday. And the day after that was Mother's Day that year. My, my birthday is May 7th. And Mother's Day that year was May 8th. <laughs> so I was stressed out. But, um, yeah, I know the end goal is for us, me and her both, to be healthy. But it's just annoying when things don't go the way you want. But anyways, I'm just blabbing. So I'm going to hop off here. And I think I'm going to work on my scrap blanket watching some murder show because <laughs> I like watching uh, true crime shows but uh, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for watch work on Wednesday uh, I don't know what I'm gonna I have to start a new whip I like starting new whips for that so I have to find something to start on and um, share it with you guys but yeah I'm gonna hop off here and I'll see you later bye guys mm -hmm.